Welcome back to the channel, guys. That is me, AD Summer Full Four. So today, guys, I want to give you guys my quick match reaction for Porto Nil, Barca One. So I know I did this, I discussed this a bit at my stream. However, I kind of want to do a bit more in depth reaction. So this will be around five to ten minutes ish on this channel. So please remember to like and subscribe. And shout out to Matt's man, by the way. I did a watch along of this channel. Um, you guys can check it out. I put the link in the community tab. So it was a good fun to discuss the game, watch the game in real time, of course. Getting back to the thing here. So let's talk about the Barca 11. So when the Barca 11 came out, I was initially thinking to myself, why the heck was uh, Andreas Christensen benched? And why was Ferran Torres benched? Other than that, the lineup was pretty spot on. I, the, I think Xavi went with the best 11. But my thing with Xavi is this, though, is that in the Champions League in particular, you can't just, you have to, we we have to start your best team, right? Because in those crucial knockout games, we need Christensen. Christensen, for me, is very, very important to this team. I respect Ara. I respect Kunde. It's just that we need to have the defensive assurance. And if it wasn't for Kunde having a masterclass at the back, who knows? We, we, we could have very well lost this game. We could have very well lost or tied this, tied this game, which would have been bad for us. And I just think that for Barca in particular, we have to worry about that. And Yamal, man. The reason why I don't want Yamal to start is that he, I feel like if he, the more he's going to start, he's going to be playing really well. And players are going to try to tackle him. Players are going to try to tackle him and foul him. And I just have a feeling that once he gets a big, big, bad tackle, he's going to get a huge long-term injury. And almost be like what happened to Ansi Fadi. Remember guys a few seasons ago where Ansi Fadi was playing extremely well. Then got that bad injury against Getafe. Sorry, against Real Batiste. And um, he was pretty much out for the rest of the season. I have a very, I have a feeling that could very well happen to Yamal. Do I want that to happen? Of course I don't want that to happen. But I'm just saying is that that could very well happen. And that is something I'm very worried with. Is that Xavi has to limit his minutes. You know, And we also seen how Pedri, someone his young at his age... Kept starting for us at a consistent rate, and he became injury prone. That's also another concern I have. Getting to the game, though. For Barca in particular, we played very pragmatically. We played very much on the front foot in the first half. The first half, we were dominating them. We created chances, chances. And it really didn't take until um, Ferran Torres scored that nice, nice solo goal there. Great, great pass from Gundogan. You know, really bad pass from Romero. The the Porto player made a mistake, made a sloppy pass. Gundogan intercepts, passes to Ferran Torres, and Ferran Torres score uh, to make it 1-0 to Barca. And that, for me, was a crucial goal. And it set the tone for the how the game would pan out. Because had that goal not happened, I think we would have seen a complete different second half. Because the second half, Barca went completely defensive. We almost It was almost like we were parking the bus. And Porto created the momentum initiative. And I have to give credit to Guyano. Guyano was a fantastic on the day. He was creating chance after chance after chance for Porto, making those great crosses into the box, great passes. And it was just it was just not good finishing from Porto. And that's what I noticed in this game. Is that this almost reminded me of what happened against uh, Inter last season, the Champions League, where Porto created a lot of chances. It's just that Inter were so good defensively that Porto weren't able to score. You know, Onana made a lot of saves. And in that regard, the same thing happened here. And shout out to Kunde, man. Kunde for me was man of the match. The guy was unbelievable. Rock solid as a center back. Made a lot of crucial challenges. And honestly, the guy was effortless, spotless. I mean, I was this impressed as him in that he's playing as a center back. His best position. You can see how good he is. You know, and then we come to the, um, you know, and then we talk about some interesting stuff then Romeo for me was awful Romeo for me was one of the worst players in the day I thought the guy was not great in the midfield kept making a lot of misplaced passes we lost the ball many times and I feel like for me Romeo just cannot start for us in those big crucial Champions League games he's kind of giving me the Busquets vibe well he may be good in La Liga he may be great in that and maybe against like weaker Champions League teams he cannot start against like the likes of Bayern he cannot start against Manchester City he just can't start against those high elite Champions League teams and guys, we all know Porto isn't one of those high elite Champions League teams. We just know they aren't. So I just think that for Port, uh, Barca in particular, we got lucky with this win. You know, the referee um, helped us, you can say. And we'll get to the decisions in a bit. And I just think that for me, for Barca, it was massive that we won this game on the road. 1-0 win on the road. And now we are pretty much um, on the brink of qualifying for the Champions League round of 60, which is something we haven't said for the last two seasons. So, you know, and with this result... 
we also should be top in the group because we got the away victory. And now we basically just have to make sure that we don't lose at home and we are going to be good to go to top this group. So, you know, that is good to know. Now let's talk about the Anthony Taylor and the referee decision. Let's talk about the first challenge made, made by Jules Kunde, I believe, in the first half. For me, it's a tricky, tricky one, guys. And I feel like I could see why that had been given. And I just hate the fact that Anthony Taylor just brushed it off and didn't even check VAR. You know, that's something I didn't like and I feel like VAR should have been checked. Now, as for the second one, the second half, for me, I don't think it should have been a penalty because for me, Cancelo, it hit his arm. Yes, it did, but it wasn't like he intentionally did. It just bounced off of you know, Estacchio's shoulder to Cancelo. And for me, that's a bit harsh to give a penalty for. And VAR actually checked that one a long time and actually the check was very long, you know? And I just don't really understand why it took so long to check. And it's just so weird with Anthony Taylor. And we know this is the same referee who likes to make controversial decisions. Like, he is notorious for that, you know? Many EPL fans can attest to this. And, of course, we could look at last season's Europa League finals, another instance uh, where um, people are going to be mad at him. So, for yeah, for Porto, as I said, man, they played really well. I think defensively they had a good game. And shout out to Guyana, as I said. For me, man of the match for Porto. Varela was also really good as well. The center mid from Argentina, prospect from Boca Juniors. He also had a good game as well. And I think for Barca, as I said, man, we just got we just got very lucky in this game. We defended well. We attacked when we needed to. And I think for Barca in particular, it's 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 good that we got this win. But we need to do much better than this because this is kind of pathetic. We we shouldn't really be parking the bus against a Portuguese. We shouldn't be parking the bus. A caliber like a team like Barcelona shouldn't be parking the bus in that kind of a Champions League knockout game. I mean Champions League game in general. So. You know, I understand we were trying to get the result, and we were trying to obviously ensure we would advance, but this is just not path this is just pathetic. You know, I, I, we need to do better than this. And as I said for Barca, man, we, we are a team that likes to play good brand of football and win. That's the type of team we are. You know, we're not, we're not just here for results. So, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it from what I want to say, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Um, like I said, guys, let me know any major talking points, comments below. I missed obviously Lewandowski got injured in the game, so hopefully get. Um, a speedy recovery, and obviously Gavi got sent off in this game for a really bad challenge, a second yellow, and Gavi will miss the game against Shakhtar, so hopefully De Jong will be back so we can have De Jong in that midfield. If not, we can always use Fermin Lopez, so you know, it will be interesting to see what happens. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it for today, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Remember guys to like and subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.